guys, it's Devin and Joe, two Taylor Swift stands, and we're here recording on another typical Tuesday night. That's right, this is the show where two Taylor Swift fans finally get to let their dedication to our Lord and Savior shine bright like a diamond. Yeah. All right, Rihanna. <laughs> That's right, yeah, I was going to say, right into Rihanna. Not Taylor Swift, um, but so we'll, we will be discussing Taylor Swift, everything from song breakdowns, Taylor news, and our insane fan theories. Which brings us to tonight, uh, what are we talking on this typical Tuesday night? So tonight we're going to be breaking down Taylor Swift's I Forgot That You Existed. Our uh, first song, song breakdown. Yes, exactly. From Lover, we're going to be doing this in a series of song breakdowns, starting with Lover as it is her most recent album. Yeah, and I think we're going to actually work our way backwards. Um, we're going to try to pepper these in as like, I don't want to call them filler episodes, um, but it, that's what it is. So call a spade a spade. Uh, <laughs> So sorry, Taylor Swift isn't in the news cycle as much as we'd love her to be. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, hopefully we get interrupted by something. Uh, but while we have the time, we're going to go back through and look through. So this one, we're going to focus on the opening track to Lover. Uh, I forgot you existed. Um, so if we want, we're going to go into, if we want, we can do whatever we want. This, this is, is our, our podcast. show. Yeah. Um, I'm going to start. I'll, I'll read off some quick facts about the song. Um, Obviously, some songs are going to have more facts than the others, but this song, I Forgot You Existed, which we're probably going to confuse with, I think he knows, at least seven times. Yes. Um, <laughs> this song was allegedly supposed to be on Reputation, but was actually cut due to Taylor Swift writing the song so late. Because um, she I, forgot. She, <laughs> she forgot the song nice. existed. Nice. That was really good. Um, which actually, like, the more that I think about it, like, the more that does make sense, it definitely... Even though it's a much more low-key song than most of Reputation, it definitely feels more Reputation than it does Lover. Exactly. Um, <laughs> this one always makes me laugh. Uh, the song is described, the genre of the song is described as pop rap and post-tropical house songs. Which honestly, like, I get that. Like, post-tropical house songs, it's a what very, like... What does that mean? It's bouncy, it's light, it's carefree, you know. Pop rap, kind of, you know, I was reading Where is she rapping the... in this song? It's the uh, the cadence of the song. It's okay. not really like she's rapping, but she's like a sing song and like pop rap, exactly. Like, she's not rapping. It's like a pop, like... Dun, okay. Dun, 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 it's dun, a faster-paced song. But that's also like a tropical, like... Dun, 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 dun. yeah like that kind of thing. i don't know i feel like it's nice to have a friend is more i would describe as tropical house because what are you kidding me it it's sounds nice to have a fr uh, well yeah true okay it has like the blink blink like the the yeah. tin can stuff mm -hmm. kind of like music on it that makes me think of like a beach resort or something okay. which i, I associate that. as tropical tropical house i guess yeah. whatever that genre is that i've never heard of before yeah um, the writers on this song are actually Taylor herself, uh, Louis Bell and Adam King Feenley, Feeney, so, Mr. Feeney. Mr. Feeney himself, yeah. Uh, also, aka Frank Dukes is another name he goes by. Right, oh, that was, that's his original name, okay. Yeah. Or that's his, like... That's his, like, producer name. Producer name, okay. So, just a quick background on these writers. Uh, Louis Bell, he really got his start with Post Malone. He helped write Congratulations, Justin Bieber's Let Me Love You. Then he worked with some similar artists like Party Next Door, Tyga, and then he did um, the Kaigo Selena Gomez song "It Ain't Me," and then Camila Cabello's "Havana." So that's. Do you mean the like, album "Havana"? Oh wait, no, her album no, her, is the song. Okay, that's probably my least favorite song on that album. Shockingly enough. Yeah. Uh, but I do love "It Ain't Me." Um, but you see, like where the theme of the songs are coming yeah. from, like all these, like kind of rap pop yeah exactly okay that Taylor's. makes a lot more sense with the described as pop rap kind of thing yeah and then uh adam king feeney aka frank dukes dukes he's done stuff with taylor lord camilla cabello travis scott drake and even kanye which Oof. i think is yeah Oof, that's that's trippy i mean it's in so both of them uh both of them only worked on the same three songs from the album they worked on i forgot that you existed afterglow and it's nice to have a friend which is funny because you mentioned that post tropical yeah. kind of same influence coming on that song yeah that's and well i that's one of my it's nice to have a friend is one of my favorite songs on the record but um yeah like i i definitely do feel like this is a, a similar aspect of it's nice to have a friend and this kind of i can see them being similar in that way and you can tell by the producers which i never actually thought about because i'm a terrible fan and i don't really look into the writers or anything like that 
Honestly, most fans and listeners or consumers of music don't. The only reason that I like to kind of like look into it is because I studied like, you know, music industry, mm-hmm. music production. So a producer stamp can be so evident on a song, which we'll get into in some like later songs, but you can really tell the influence that they have on a song or even a couple tracks. That's one of the things I'm excited about with these song breakdowns is getting to go in, in depth. And like you have such a different knowledge of this stuff than I do. Like, you know all about, like, these producers, these writers. Like, you you were the one, when we were talking about doing this podcast, mm-hmm. I knew who Jack Antov was just because his name is so synonymous with Taylor. And I said it wrong, didn't I? Yeah. I was going to say, <laughs> say An- Anoff, did you say? Ant- no, I said Antov. Antonov. Antonov. Okay. It's like Jack three syllables. Antonov. Antonov yeah. Okay. But I also didn't know that he was a lead singer of Bleachers. Um, until and he was he also in that. fun. And then he, yeah, that's the most surprising to me. He was also mm-hmm. in fun. He yeah. wasn't a lead singer of fun, was he? No. Thank God. All right. Yeah. That would have made me feel terrible. I think he Anyway. Was. Yeah. Jack Antonov was not on, the, Antonov was not on this record or. No. What? Song. He's not on the song is he's, where I'm trying to get. He's Sorry. on eight of the songs he's on this record. He's on eight of the 17 songs. He's actually not as many as I think he usually is, but that's not here, neither here nor there because we're talking about, I forgot that you existed. Mm-mm. <laughs> Um, okay. So if we want to go into a little bit of the context around the song, actually, I think this is like one of the, one of the good ones that has a lot of weird context you can kind of build from. Yeah. Um, definitely. One of the things that we both noted was this is like, this definitely, and we said it earlier, it's not really, it, it's the mo- least lover song on this record. Um, mm-hmm. And it definitely feels like the perfect transition from reputation to this new era. Exactly. I couldn't picture another song being the lead, you know, the opening track on mm-hmm. Lover. Because, I, yeah, I think it ties up the last feelings of reputation, you know. It's got a very bouncy, clean feeling to it. It's kind of just like you're going about your day and you're like, oh, I forgot that you existed. And that allows, you know, once you realize that someone who once had all this power over you doesn't matter and you forgot that they existed, it kind of gives you the freedom to let go and actually embrace you know, this love and these feelings into your life. It's, yeah, like, it, it, that's the, actually, I can't think of a better way to word it. Yeah, like, it just seems like such a great, and like I said, it's so different than anything else on this record, and um, it's it's so cool that, like, it does tell a story, and, like, it, it gives mm-hmm. a continuity between the two albums, and it, it does really give, like, a good, all right, I'm done with reputation, I'm done with that point in my life, and now we're moving on to carefree, um, whatever I want to do, I'm not, and I don't think in the rest of the song, in the rest, rest of these uh, songs, does she reference any of her ex-lovers anymore? I'm probably, I'm going off the cuff here. I didn't make a note of that, but I'm trying to think like, yeah. of like a song, as she, because Death by a Thousand Cuts, she does do a breakup song, but that has nothing to do with her life. That was based on the movie Something Great. Mm-hmm. Um, Miss Americana is about the United States and that kind of thing. Um, it's nice to have a friend I think was based on her friends. I think you might be right. Yeah. I don't, I don't think it's... I don't want to I don't want to have to do another yeah. disclaimer or anything because I know there are going to be comments and people telling us that we're wrong. Hey, guys. <laughs> <laughs> but in the moment, it does feel like this is this is like her, I'm done with that life. Kind yeah, of like thing. letting it, it go. It, it feels like, which is so, it's so cool that she has like a, a sign-off song as her first song on the album. It's lovers clean. What does that mean? What do you like, mean by that? Clean, like you know, the like the rain came pouring down. Oh yeah, that's when that's I was a good drowning. Point. Now I'm finally clean. Like this yeah. is her clean from reputation into lover. Yeah, I like that a lot. And it and I think one of the other things we noticed about this song was that compared to all of her other albums, this is like the most low key opening track she's ever had. Yes. Like, if you look back, I, I went all the way back to Fearless, which I can't remember what the opening on Fearless was. Um, but even up to something to speak now, the opener would being mine, just a big production song. It was a pop uh, pop anthem that was a radio song. This mm-hmm. song is nowhere close to a radio song. Welcome to New York. You you can hear a, 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 a dance number to it. State of Grace is like, my friend, uh, mentioned state of grace is like a huge u2 s stadium song yeah um and then ready reputation for ready for it just a uh, in your face like boom, boom, boom. and then this song just really chill 
relaxing on the beach. <laughs> like, yeah, and just very simplistic, just like snap, rhythmic snapping. And like, yeah. I think you know, you noted that there, there isn't a lot, and we're getting a little ahead of ourselves, but there isn't a lot to this song in the actual music behind the lyrics. Yeah. So also, uh, a thing that we had debating about this song is who's it about? <laughs> yeah, we had a lot of existed. notes going back and forth about this. So uh, who do you think the song's about? I, my, when I first heard the song, um, and for all the way up until we discussed doing this episode, I was dead set that this song was about Kanye West and no one else. Um, and I told you, yeah. oh, hell no. Nah. Yeah, you, um, you pointed out the Calvin Harris thing, and I immediately just like completely mind blown like wow that's insane that this mm. song could actually and like the more you look into it obviously the more it makes sense because it's if you actually google the song every theory points out Kanye West and uh Calvin Harris yeah honestly if you look into any of the lyrics you can kind of make it out to be either one of them but if it is about Calvin Harris this would be the first song allegedly about him <laughs> And this girl what on Twitter, a song. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, this girl on Twitter at it's uh, at it's brighter now said she literally didn't write one song about Calvin and then went, you know what? I'll give you one and name it. I forgot that you existed. Like how harsh would that be? Ice queen, ice queen, incredible. She's Elsa. It's Iconic. Savage. It's that's amazing, and it's great too because like I'm trying to think on reputation. There weren't a lot of songs, like a lot of her songs that were dis, quote unquote, diss tracks, mm -hmm. uh, weren't really about ex-lovers as much in that song, in that album, I don't think. And I, I, I'm, again, I'm going off the cuff here. Yeah. Uh, and I'm sure there'll be comments telling me that I'm wrong. But I think a lot of them were like the feud with Katy Perry, the feud with Kim K, the feud with Kanye. Mm -hmm. Like all of her like non-relationship feuds were kind of aired out to dry uh, on that album. So this is like the first one that we've heard in a while mm -hmm. that kind of harkens back to old Taylor where I, I was reading the vinyl that I have of Speak Now uh, and on the little like um, introduction to it, it says, uh, if, if, you, if you think one of these songs is about you, uh, you knew what you were getting into or something to that effect. Yeah. Um, so like, this is like that harkening back to the old Taylor where that's the case. Well, exactly. I mean, my argument is at the end of the day, it's not specifically about one like sole person. Yeah. It's supposed to be a tongue in cheek kind of song. That's like, well, if the shoe fits, like. I, I think it's definitely, I, I, and I, I, we ended up reaching a consensus where we don't think it is about one. Yeah. We definitely don't think it's about one person. Yeah. We think she definitely draws from feuds from both people that mm -hmm. she's fighting with. Um, and like one of the things, the, the, the most crazy piece that someone, that I saw someone point out was, um, your name on my, uh, your name on my lips, uh, which is like Calvin Klein lipstick, uh, mm. Calvin, Calvin Harris name on your lips, like insane. Sh yeah. That's, that's <laughs> the exact note that I gave it was absolutely shook. Um, <laughs> Um, but then there's, like, the stuff with Kanye where, like, in the beginning, um, like, she said, oh, geez, I'm going to our, to our music, uh, to the lyrics that we talked about. Um, but <laughs> when she talked about In My Feelings More Than Drake, like, there is the Drake and Kanye. I learned this doing the research that they actually had a bit of a beef uh, back and forth. And I know that there is, like, a lot of Taylor Swift and Drake connection, I think, from, like, the commercial where she was listening to Future uh, and Drake's, uh, what was the song? It was well, Jumpman? Sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because she, she was running yeah. on the treadmill. She was running on the it's treadmill. The she was listening to, yeah, she was listening to Jumpman. Mm -hmm. um, but there's, like, some connection between Taylor Swift and Drake. Obviously, now there's more because she called him out by name. Um, but, like, kind of showing, like, the beef, like, pointing out to Kanye there. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that kind of got me a little uh, iffy reading about it was uh someone mentioned that the song could also be about carly close who i don't know the details behind that feud as much or carly about Kloss? carly Kloss. is that her yeah. name you can tell i don't know anything about her don't get me started um, on carly Kloss. I, we will get you started on carly Kloss. um or lord and that one hit so hard because i love lord to death oh yeah I, same she is one of my favorite singers 
And I remember be, me and my friend uh, are huge fans of Lord. Like we just, anytime anything happens with her, we immediately text each other. Mm-hmm. And we were so happy that they were friends and it was something we talked about a lot. And it wasn't until I read that this song could be about her, which I don't believe at all. I no. do not think it's about her at all. But when it was mentioned, I was like, yeah, they haven't done anything together in a while. Well, did you did you hear about, like, what Lord said? Yeah, did it I up? did. Yeah, it was the autoimmune thing. It's like when you're friends with someone who has an autoimmune deficiency, you know, you can't go out certain places with them. You can't do certain things. And Which was she, a boneheaded thing to say. Yeah, she apologized since afterwards. Yeah. And I like that, if 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 Taylor decides that you're no longer, she's no longer friends with her because of that, that's a little iffy. I don't know. I don't think Taylor would do that. I wouldn't put it past her just because of who she is and how she, how like we've seen her. But mm-hmm. that makes me sad. Yeah, I, I mean, love I love I've, their relationship. I've read since that they're on, like, speaking terms, and they're good now, but at the time, it definitely was, like, a I'm not going to talk to you for a bit kind of oh, reaction. That, that hurts. Why, what was the thing that happened with Carly Kloss? Yeah. Well, that is, that is a conspiracy theory for another day. Carly Kloss and Taylor Swift were really close friends. Some would say even closer than friends. Some Squad mates? Are you, are you actually kidding me? Do you not know about the conspiracy theory that... No, I have no idea. I know she was on the squad. Oh. Oh, Joe. The That's conspiracy why... conspiracy I... theory episode, everyone thought they were dating. What? You would get freaking canceled by Stan Twitter right now. Oh, my. There's a huge conspiracy that... Taylor Swift is like at least bisexual, if not a lesbian, and all these people. That oh, I know that theory. I remember reading that. I don't. I don't believe that theory. Oh, Joe. I don't believe that theory <laughs> at all. Like I remember reading like one thing of like, um, what was it? She like posted a picture that had like the three colors of the bi flag. In oh. It. Okay, wait, I'm going to get really mad about this because she literally, this is for You Need to Calm Down, and she has this whole song about, you know, gay rights and GLAD and all this stuff, and she puts the bi colors in her hair, and she makes cookies with, you know, pink, purple, and or was it pink, purple, blue, or the bi flag? Yeah, and everyone's like, oh my god, this is it. She's going to come out as bisexual in the video. It's going to be great. Everyone's, you know, her and Diana Agron, that relationship was going to get confirmed. Her and Carly Kloss was going to get confirmed. But then she's just like, nope. Like she's I just, can't. She's queer baiting everyone. I don't think she is. I just think she's trying to show support. She this has, has nothing to do with I forgot that you existed. Not at all. But I, like I said, you don't want to get me started. because We will. Be- we'll do that. will be another episode we do where Perfect. we hotly debate that. Uh, and I probably come out looking mark? terrible. Jeez. Anyway. Um. <laughs> all right. So where are we looking at lyrics? So we, lyrics? yeah, we're looking at some lyrics. So your name's on my lips, tongue tied. We talked about the In My Feelings More Than Drake. Um, I also think that that could be about, you know, Kanye feuding with Jay-Z so they have a very like sibling like relationship they've you know Jay-Z has said Kanye is like my little brother um but over time in certain diss tracks you know like um Jay-Z wrote a song I forget the name of it off the top of my head basically like kind of calling him out this is when Kanye started to go crazy he got very political like this was really when the falling out started ever like since they they've been fine um Kanye has apologized in one of the songs in his album. So, but that could also just be, you know, he's losing these people in his life because of his actions. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. There was also the lyric um, that I forget what it was. It was something about, uh, I would have been there front row uh, even if nobody came to your show, Mm -hmm. Um, which I think can be applied to Calvin Harris, Kanye West, and unfortunately, Lord. Um, <laughs> um, but like obviously Calvin Harris uh, because of like he performs shows yes yeah. as, as a musical artist and she would have been front row because she was dating him I feel like she would have been in a box like well a I mean <laughs> front row metaphorically yeah, yeah. as support and I think I was reading there's another an article about Kanye West and he, when he was going on tour he was at the Brit Awards 2015 Brit Awards 
and uh, he was uh, performing a new song. I forget what the song was. Um, but it pointed out that she was actually front row at that show and she was like bopping along and like I think mm-hmm. at one point singing. Um, so like it definitely points back to the like she was trying to be friends, trying to extend this olive branch and then he kanye it as he often does. Yeah. Um, and then... <laughs> And then it goes into, well, yeah, I would have been there. I would have been at your shows. Like, I would have supported you. And I feel like that's the thing that Taylor does. And you see it from, like, all of her Instagram posts. And when she had the squad and everything, like, if she, if you were in with Taylor, she was the most supportive person to you, your career, and your aspirations. What a friend. And, yeah. What a, right? what a goals. gal. Squad, I think, like, that's squad goals. Like, I think she basically made that thing a thing. Um, but... Yeah, and then just then showing that like she goes back on it and is like, well, we're not. Like yeah. I would have been there, but you you screwed it up, and now mm-hmm. I don't even remember you. Yep. Um, I I think it does make more sense that she forgot Calvin existed than she forgot Kanye existed. Honestly, just, didn't we all forget Calvin existed? That was what I was gonna say. I don't know. I know this is what we you came for, and that's about it. And every time I think of that song, I think of Taylor Swift and not Calvin Harris. Mm-hmm. Then he, he had another song, Slide, I think it was. Yeah, with uh, but, Katie. Oh no, with uh, Frank Ocean. Yeah, um, but I don't think of him in that song either. Like I, I he's a producer. Yeah. Um, yeah. but Kanye West is impossible to forget about. Like, I cannot believe that she would actually forget that Kanye existed just based on how nuts that lunatic of a man is who somehow puts out amazing records, mm-hmm. but is an absolute psycho. Yeah, I mean, she might have, like, forgot that he existed in the sense of, like, what he did to her and, like, how he affected her. Yeah. Not so maybe his personality himself. Yeah. yeah. It, he's just He's just out there. Um, another thing that I noticed... Uh, or I guess that we noticed, because uh, we, we actually went back and forth on this a bit. Um, this, as the opening track, this does lay the groundwork for what seems to be, like, a bit of a theme, like, interwoven between the, the different songs of childhood. Mm-hmm. Um, it definitely feels like she's... This so- this album as a whole has definitely felt like she was getting back to her roots and going back to pre-1989 a bit. Um, there's a lot more guitar, a lot more simplicity, or simplicity, yeah. Uh, throughout the music uh, than, their, than the big numbers and reputation or like the very poppy 1989 um, and yeah like we know we noted that uh, she references laughed on the schoolyard as soon as I tripped up and hit the ground um, as like the opener to show that she's going back to the old days um, honestly I feel like this album and we can get into it later is you know, it's very reflective. A lot of the Mm -hmm. lyrics on this album and the themes are reflective of her looking back at these older eras and, you know, comparing to where she is now. Yeah, and in a a different way than she did in rep, Mm -hmm. where, like, it definitely felt like in rep she was looking back on, like, in a dark way as opposed to this is just a very... You can even tell just by the artwork and, like, the, the... the aesthetic of this era of being very bright, airy, ethereal. Yeah. Um, but she also mentions, uh, we, we went through the album, tried to find some other references to childhood. Uh, it's nice to have a friend, uh, Miss Americana. I forgot, obviously, I forgot that you existed. Uh, Shiny Toy in Cruel Summer is a bit of a stretch, yeah. but it kind of works. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I Never Grew Up, It's Getting So Old and Archer, like just, again, just hearkening back to like her childhood and going back into like, that old section of her life um, definitely seemed like something that this this song and album was like kind of like a mini theme mm-hmm. um, that this thing can, that this album can hold. Yeah, we can definitely see that. Um, so before we go into the next, we're going to talk about the music behind the lyrics, which is going to be Devin explaining to me how music works, basically. Uh, but before we get to that, let's stop and have a quick ad break and hear from our sponsor, Anchor. Hey guys, I want to take a quick break to shout out our sponsor, Anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor, let me explain. It is the easiest way to make a podcast. It's free. There are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast straight from your phone or your computer. And Anchor will distribute your podcast for you, so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many, many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's truly everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. And now back to the show. And we're back. Um, Devin, please tell me about the music behind the lyrics. Okay, so music 
is uh, the instrumental track that you'll I, hear. I swear to God, I thought you were, I, and I still think you were going to go into this nuts childhood expla- explanation. Oh, I was just going to explain what music is. I hate you. <laughs> you know, the guitar, you know what the I, sounds it makes? Stop, stop. Okay. So on this song, it's very, it's a very simplistic production on this, not to like discount the producers on the song, but I think, you know, the point of it was to be simple. There's just a couple piano bars. The only instruments I really thought I heard were like, you know, the snaps, um, the piano, some like horn slash, I don't know if it was like a synth bass uh, at times, um, some drum sounds, either 808s or snares. I don't really, really know which is which, but this song is an F major. Uh, and it's only 93 beats per minute, so it's a relatively, like, slower song. And something really interesting, I'm going to get very theory-esque here, is there's one minor uh, chord in the song. I think it's a D minor. And the only time that they play it is they do this little, like, downstepping pattern right before the chorus. It's, but then something happened one magical night. And I think mm-hmm. it's really cool because the rest of the song is very, like, Da, na, 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 na. like very just like happy and like in the major wow. key and then the only time you hear that minor key which is like usually used to represent some kind of like conflict or sadness is wow. like when something happened or you showed who you are so it kind of shows that conflict but then i forgot that you exist and you're back to that you know major happy chord that is so cool i love that has given me a brand new uh appreciation of the song that is so cool that i I never realized that yeah and you can you can hear it too like you know like everything is so upbeat and happy and then there's like the sinister turn Mm -hmm. on that bridge or what is it minor chord it's the pre-chorus yeah um and it's just it's so interesting it just it goes in the minor and then comes back up that's so cool and, and what you like, what you said, like it is very simplistic, not to like denote the uh, or not to denounce the producers of the song, but I think that kind of speaks to them. They know, like what, how, to, when the choice to make something simplistic. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think that's an easy choice to make. I think it's it's fun to always go above and beyond, but they knew to strip a lot of it out. Um, talk more. No, I want to hear more. Okay. About- <laughs> Uh, well, like we said earlier, Frank Dukes is on production, who, you know, frequently collaborates with Drake, which was a cool connection in the lyric, you know, um, the Drake lyric. The, in, in my feelings more than Drake. My, so, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, I don't know if you want to touch on basically what the diss track was like, because, I mean, this is essentially a little bit of a diss track. Yeah, uh, that's one of the things I noticed with it was like, it definitely, I mean, this is 100% a diss track. Like, this mm-hmm. is hands down but if you look to like what her old diss tracks were that are the ones that i could think of off the top of my head was this is why we can't have nice things look what you made me do uh which are both long song <laughs> song titles i didn't realize that until i typed it out in her notes but those are both really long titles for songs uh I and forgot i forgot that you the, existed yeah. it's too yeah um she Wordy. really wants to pinpoint when she's dissing you out this is um, why we can't have nice things <laughs> this is why we can't have nice things oh <laughs> um but yeah no and then like both of those like those songs are just these huge productions with like heavy hooks very hard hitting beats and then this song is just very light airy and just i forgot that you existed mm-hmm. like and but it's somehow it's more cutting than both of those songs combined like I, there's just something about the i didn't i don't even know you it's just happy. completely slipped my mind that I'm is sorry, just sorry do i know you yeah, like, <laughs> it's it's so cool, because I, I mean, uh, off the top of my head, I didn't really do a lot of research on this aspect, but I didn't, I can't think of many um, diss tracks that are, that are this, like, Light? So, um, aloof, I would say. Yeah, because I was going to say, there's another, like, the theme of, you know, not necessarily diss tracks, but just, like, snarkier songs is, mm-hmm. you know, Mean and Picture to Burn, but those are also bangers. It's, they are, yeah. Uh, this one is so aloof. Um, we talk about this childhood, like childhood theme, and you know uh, the simplicity of childhood and playgrounds. Is you can hear that in the little sing-song melody that's throughout the song. Like, mm-hmm. da, 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 da. like it sounds like you're on like a childhood playground. You just woke up, you're singing to yourself, you're just going about your day, and oh, I forgot that you existed. And it's it's it it really sets the tone for the the whole album because like it's not. It doesn't have, it, this album is nowhere near the same production 
uh, level as Reputation was. And it's also interesting, too, because this is the first album that she made on her own without Big Machine. Mm-hmm. Um, so, like, it, it shows wow. that she's breaking off. Yeah, she's breaking off of Big Machine. I wonder if, do you think this song has anything to do with Scooter or... I mean, like it's uh, like we said, you know, it could be applicable to other people. I don't if the shoe fits. Exactly. If the shoe fits. I mean, I forgot that you existed. It isn't love. It isn't hate. It's just indifference. Yeah. But I feel like she does hate Scooter Braun. Yeah. So I feel like I feel like it might not be about her. <laughs> Maybe not. But it's just you know, and even the end of it, it's just it isn't love. It isn't hate. It's just indifference. So yeah. Yeah, and that's I love that. Like it's so casual. She does a lot of talking, not like talking, but like you know what I mean. Like mm-hmm. it's it's just ending on a laugh too. Like keep it like I'm dissing you, but I'm keeping the the mood light. Exactly. Um, which I think is big on this album. Like there, except for I I would guess one standout song that is not very light. Mm. Um. Uh, it's a very light and breezy album. Um, so yeah, I think that definitely hits on where she, this, I think you, you noted this, uh, but there's no other song on this record that could be the first song on Lover. Exactly. Um, it needs to be. There's no song that bridges it better. I mean, I like, if you were to put this song anywhere else in the album, it wouldn't make sense. Mm-hmm. The fl- it wouldn't flow right. Like this song being the kickoff is the only place that I would put this song. Which is cool because like, I feel like, as we move, this is going to get into music as a whole, um, but we're going to probably close up a little bit sooner. But um, as we, as a music as a whole, I feel like a lot of songs and a lot of albums nowadays don't really expect you to listen to them start to finish without shuffle, if that makes sense. I would argue the other way. I mean, I think in a singles driven society i think there are a lot of songs that are just radio singles but usually when artists put out an album they do expect you to expect you to listen from beginning to end i do that so infrequently unless taylor swift has put out an album that i might have to start doing that (laughs) i hate you as a person (laughs) albums deserve to be listened to from front to back there's an order for a reason usually you know Albums tell a story. It all started with like, what the Beatles, Sgt. Pepper's only. Oh, I hate it was the, the Beatles. F- all right. Um, <laughs> Devin's like, all right, we're going to close out right now. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks, guys. <laughs> Thank you guys for listening before Devin cuts off my head. Uh, please make sure to follow us on whatever podcast app you're listening on, and please rate us five stars. Drop a comment, uh, drop us a review. Yeah, we'd love to hear it. You can also find us on social media, on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook at We Need to Calm Down Podcast. On Twitter, it is uh, WNTCD Podcast. Uh, be Rolls sure right to give us. I know, right? <laughs> Just the winter kunta. <laughs> uh. <laughs> we uh, give us a follow. Let us know what you think. If you think the Beatles are great, send Please me a stop. DM. We'll see it. No, I don't need. Everyone thinks the Beatles are great. I know I'm in the minority here. We love feedback, what you'd like to see, things you'd like discussed, anything. Thank you guys for listening. Come back. We'll be here. Bye.